Father, he said, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. Mark 14, 36. That was the prayer of Jesus while in Gethsemane, before his arrest, suffering, and death. That is what Jesus told God when it became too much for him to bear. It was the surrender prayer. Jesus was at a weak moment in his life. He prayed for what was lying before him to be made away with. You might be in a similar situation. You are feeling weak. There is no more fight in you. The fight song in you might be long dead. And from that point, you don't know how to proceed. That is the time to start depending on God. When Jesus felt that it was all too much to bear, he went and talked it out to his Father. And right there and then, help was sent from above. He did not seek to use his power to evade his arrest and the events to follow. He did not feel sorry for himself. He simply went and told to God in prayer. To depend on God, we must let it known to him that all our hope is on him. You cannot depend on someone who has no idea that you are depending on them. You must talk to God. Tell him your feelings. Talk to him about your fears and your struggles. Tell him that you are at the end of your wits. Talk to him about your anxieties, sadness, and loneliness. Tell him that the cup has become too bitter to swallow, the burden too heavy to bear. Show him your weakness. The only way you can let God know about this is if you pray. Prayer is the way we communicate with our Father. It is very critical in our lives. It is what keeps the relationship with Him alive. Just like lack of communication causes death of our relationships with others, failing to pray to God can also make us die spiritually. We should pray without ceasing. Prayer enables us to surrender our lives to God. It makes us to be total dependent on Him. Prayer keeps away temptations. Mark 14.38 says, Watch and pray, so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Prayer helps us overcome temptation, whether external or internal. Even when our flesh is weak, through prayer we can command it to be subdued under the spirit. Prayer opens a realm of possibilities. It fills our spirits. Through prayer we can make our requests known to God. Your schedule might be very busy, either due to work, family activities, or other engagements. But it should not be the reason you lack enough time for prayer. When Jesus wanted to pray, he retreated to a lonely place, further away from his disciples. That is where he went to talk to God. Prayer requires peace, calmness, and a settled heart. It requires undivided attention. That is why people go for prayer retreats away from their workplaces, from their schoolmates or families, from the noise of the city to the quiet place downstream, from the noisy living room to the quiet bedroom. That is why some people rise up early in the morning when it's still very quiet to pray. You need to make time for prayer. Retreat to a lonely and quiet place, away from the notifications of cell phone messages or the laughter of friends. A place that will tap into your spirit an environment that can allow for the Holy Spirit to come down. That will be the perfect spot to pray. To connect with God and create a breakthrough in your spirit, you will not only feel the presence of God, but you'll even be able to hear what He instructs you to do as His dependent. When you choose to leave all your worries, sorrow, and grief, and cry out to God in prayer, He will hear and answer. When the true prophets of God were being pursued and killed by Jezebel, and the followers of Baal, Elijah ran to the wilderness and hid in a cave. He was afraid. He did not want to get killed, for Jezebel had put a threat on his life. At Mount Horeb, God promised to meet him. First came a great and powerful wind, but God was not there. Then fire and next an earthquake, but God was not in these either. God appeared to Elijah in a small, still voice. Despite the earthquake, wind, and fire, which were all mighty, it was the still small voice that mattered, and it was what Elijah heeded to. Your situation might be like Elijah's. All around you might be earthquakes and fires and winds. The mountains might be tearing apart and the fire burning fiercely. 
but you must learn how to speak and recognize the still, small voice, the voice of God. That voice can only be heard if your spirit is calm and if you seek it in prayer. Sometimes we need people to support us in our journey of faith. When Jesus was retreating to the garden to pray, he did not go alone. He went with three of his disciples. Mark 14, 32 through 34. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took Peter, James, and John along with him, and he began to be deeply stressed and troubled. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death, he said to them. Stay here and keep watch. We should have friends who are willing and ready to walk with us the spiritual journey. People who can help us pray, who can intercede for us when we are feeling weak, who know the value of salvation and are ready to guard it. Prayer should not be done just for the sake of it. You should not pray because it is routine or because others are doing it. Prayer should be a habit in your life. You should pray without ceasing. Pray with thanksgiving. Pray with an intent. Purpose to pray. Pray whenever and wherever you can. There is no person the devil fears like a prayerful person. When you've mastered the worship of prayer, you become a spiritual warrior. Because prayer is a weapon in the wars of the spirit. Sometimes you might be struggling financially, socially, academically, and maybe the reason is because you haven't prayed about it. Remember, prayer can open doors nothing else can. Colossians 4, 2 says, Devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. Hannah was a troubled and broken woman in the Bible. Her up-to-then barren state had become a source of pain in her life. Her lack of children was the reason her co-wife Peninnah mocked and humiliated her endlessly. Hannah's heart was in pain. At her lowest moment, she went out and cried out to God. So deep was her agony that her lips were moving, but no words were coming from her mouth. The priest, Eli, thought she was drunk, and Hannah's prayer touched God. He answered her through Eli. When Jesus was praying in the Garden of Gethsemane, the Bible says that he prayed earnestly until his sweat became like drops of blood. Luke 22:44. God sent down an angel to give him strength. Hannah and Jesus are examples of people who prayed sincerely to God. Their prayers came from their hearts. They were neither forced nor done out of routine. They were an expression of their innermost feelings. That is how we should pray, with sincerity and openness of heart. We should not hide anything from God. We should tell it all to Him. Our prayer should come from deep within us. Prayers like those touch the heart of God. They tap into heavenly anointing and open up the floodgates of heaven unto our lives. They pour rainfalls of blessings our way. They leave us spiritually satisfied and calm with the knowledge that God is taking care of everything. Sometimes you may feel it hard to pray the way Hannah and Jesus did. One cannot pray sincerely if there is something evil in their hearts. That is why David tells God, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me, and lead me in thy way everlasting. We should seek to go into prayer with pure hearts, hearts which is nothing but desire to connect with God. Matthew 5, 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Proverbs 4, 23. Guard your hearts, for all you do flows from it. Purity of the heart is very important. That is why David made this prayer to God in Psalms 19:13. Keep back thy servants also from the presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be upright. I shall be clear from great transgression. James 5:16 says that the prayer of the righteous person is powerful. The reason we lack peace at times is because we are fighting battles that are the Lord's. Exodus 14:14 14, 14 tells us that we need to be still because the Lord will fight for us. We often forfeit a lot of peace and bear a lot of grief, yet we have the privilege of taking it to the Lord in prayer. God wants us to depend on Him. He wants you to depend on Him. Take your burdens to Him. If you pray to God sincerely, He will turn your situations around. He will make a way where there seems none. 
He will shed dazzling light into the dark place you are in. Prayer brings hope and faith. It promises us a better tomorrow if we do it sincerely. Philippians 4.6 Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Start depending on God. Strengthen yourself by telling it to God. Pray today. Pray now.